Season 1, Episode 9, Andor. Here we go. Season 1, Episode 9, Andor. Ah, this is the interrogation. This is an interrogation of Supervisor Miro. I don't know. <laughs> of Bix by Supervisor Miro. Remember that? I was getting pretty scared when I watched this. Yeah. Because uh, Miro's kind of scary. She's intense. She's intense, yeah. I like it. Oh, and here's like and the look, torture people person. Mm-hmm. Dr. Gorst. And look, he's so friendly. He's so friendly. Like, Hello. He's going to stab you. But he's he friendly. He's not going to stab you. Very clean. Very clean coat. He's, yeah, he's going to cut gonna on you. you. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's going to do it. He'll just put on like the, the uh, scrubs. He'll be fine. Yeah. This is street clothing. I don't know. Yeah. He seemed friendly. Okay. I mean, all aren't all psychos just friendly? Oh, I thought he was a scientist. Oh. Oh. Actually, the nicer somebody is Maybe. to you, the the actual closer to a torturer they are. So if somebody's really mean to you, that means they're a good person. Uh, really? That's the logic. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell me I'm wrong. Can't. I can't. I can't. Oh, here's a close-up of our boy. Yep. So polite, yeah, seems therefore, he's a psycho. Psycho. Look at that smile. He's just ready to start slicing. It looks like he's practiced that smile. Mm, true. So this is the torture device that he gets a lot of uh, pleasure from using pleasure. internally. Don't make it weird. But but how does it how does it work? She like puts it on and it's just like a pain helmet. Is that what's going on here? Oh, I think what it does is so they recorded the sounds of and the civilization that they destroyed because that civilization didn't want to have a fuel depot. I mean, just put the fuel depot. What are you doing? And so then they recorded like the sounds and isolated the children's sounds and it's like apparently the children dying sounds really bad. I I buy it. Does I mean doesn't sound good like right. Right. So also, it's just... I heard something about. I think I learned in psychology, I guess, that like your your temporal lobes connect to some part of your brain that bypasses your frontal cortex, and so you feel emotions very quickly and very strongly because it bypasses like your thinking. This would be a very good torture device. Oh no! Okay. That's so. Is yeah. it just piping in the torture sounds and images to her? I thought it was like a I don't, nightmare I don't machine. Think... Like, I think it's just sounds. It's just sounds. Like you like she's she's feeling the pain of of hearing someone next to her die. I think that's what's happening. It must not just be sound then. It must be the sound in addition to these like I mean up here there's like was it like <gasps> little probes or like little, little electrodes like feeling yeah. causers. So it's like you will feel yeah. terrible along with the horrible shrieking sounds of this that's a good point. I think we actually have this. It's like, I mean, not we, like, but I think there's like a medical thing where they like put electrodes on your head and then they can apply voltages and like change your mood. I think this is would be the same okay. thing. But this may be more advanced where they can be like, you will feel pain. And they're like, Zzz, Zzz. well, no, okay, yeah. not, not electricity. There's no electricity. But I mean, like directly to the emotions in your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if they could do it to like change your phobias. Like... Like you're like I don't like roller coasters. Like put this on. <laughs> like, oh oh, roller coasters are fun now. So maybe they could eliminate phobias, but they have the empire, so they want to introduce phobias. Yeah, that's a good point. They're so, evil. Like she's gonna have a phobia of Cassian from now on. <gasps> what a twist! Mm-hmm. Or are they gonna train her to be a secret agent? Well, maybe a sleeper agent. She doesn't even know. Yeah. We'll see. Excited. Excited for the season. I hear she is wearing it. Yeah, there's oh, yeah. clearly I think there's clearly more going on than just sounds. There's definitely they're piping in emotions into her brain. Something. Yeah, I guess the immediacy which she felt that. Oof. Right. You can see it under her face, the emotion. Yeah. But I wonder, like the Empire does very good tech. They do. I bet these like I bet these have very good sound quality. 
noise cancellation. Right. Not only, they're probably very, very good noise canceling headphones and thought canceling headphones. So you get to feel the pain in its purest form. If their tech is as clean as their bureau bureaucratic buildings, it's tight. Perfectly designed. Excellent engineering. <laughs> it's just evil. Speaking of torture, this uh, this right here reminded me of uh, Star Wars. I think they did an homage. Okay, so here she is getting tortured. Okay, Pix is getting tortured. Door closed. And walk and then this is definitely an homage to the Darth Vader scene cool totally right yeah totally it's a little twist on the end when he turns around the corner for some reason when my brain was watching that um, it was like yes I know what that is <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so cool. I may I have good torture associations in Star Wars. That's fun. Hey, it's a build a brand fan base. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Ooh, I had questions about this guy. Ooh, yes. So does he I thought so I think he outranks Miro. So if we look at his um ranking there, four blue pips. Four mm -hmm, blue pips, mm -hmm. right? Okay, two mm -hmm. pens on the right shoulder, no pens on oh, the left shoulder. Two pens on the on the same shoulder. Yeah, and I believe that she addresses him as a superior in this scene. So she it says she go look really? at a picture of Mir Miro. Where is that? Uh, yeah, Empire. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Three pips. Oh shit! Three pips. Three pips. But white uniform. White uniform. So you got white uniform, three blue pips. This guy has black uniform. Black uniform, four blue pips. But four pips, man, that's good. That's good so pips. Were, weren't you speculating that the black means he's like army or infantry or something? But the Maybe, four because... means he outranks her? Yeah, we're thinking that four is ISB or somehow like Intel, and the more pips you have, the better, because that like the mm -hmm. that super high rank guy had six pips, and and then, but I and I think black is, I think black manages stormtroopers, because okay. in the hallway scene where we saw with with Clea, there was a guy there was a guy with two blue two red pips and wearing mm -hmm. black, and he's just right in front of the stormtroopers. Mm -hmm. And if I so, remember here, he's like asking if he can have what if like what he can do with um, the the dad of the green jacket. Mm, can we look? Can we look to the right? Yeah. He's what are we talking one about? Of Andor's. He's one of Andor's collateral. Yeah. Yes. Green jacket guy. Salem Pack. Salem Pack. Yeah. Yeah. What about him? So the security officer with with the black jacket and the four pips mm -hmm. he's asking if he can what he can do with this guy's life and his body and Miro's oh, okay. like do whatever oh, you yeah. want and he's like oh yeah i want to hang him and then Miro's like sure do whatever you want so because because he was asking her what he can do with it i thought that she outranked him but maybe maybe she outranks him because she's like she's isb i think so maybe she's look... like i would think the pip number would always override any structure in parallel organizations so four always ranks out ranks three so let's let's bring up the scene and see um here we go let's see what they say here we go ready let's end it as you wish wait uh, send, send more send more yeah. send more yeah. she's the only one we've got who can identify access and salmon park wait there wait send, send more I'd like to hang him. Wait, wait, wait. What's left of him, anyway? Make sure they know who's in charge. As you wish. Make sure you know who's in charge as you wish. So he gives the command and she says, as you wish. Oh, no, I thought she, he was saying, she's like, 
he's like, what can I do with her? What do with the the Salem pe- pe- uh, Peck? Mm-hmm. And then he's she's like, well, I don't know. What do you want? And then he's like, I want to hang him up, make mm-hmm. show him who's in charge. And so she's like, sure, do whatever you want. I think when he says show them who's in charge, he's talking about the the locals of Ferrix. What am I saying? Let's go one more time. Can we go further back? She's a witness. She's the. Yeah, great. Keep her here. Keep her alive. As a hostage? As a witness. She's the only one we've got who can identify Axis. And Salmon Park? I don't care. I'd like to hang him. What's left of him, anyway. Make sure they know who's in charge. As you wish. I see that is muddled. At first, she gives a command. And at the end, he sort of gives a command. I think she gives commands and he's like, what can I, he's like, he's like getting directions from her mm-hmm. about what to do with the prisoners. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, keep the girl alive because we need her. And he's like, and the guy. And she's like, what do you want to do? And then he's like, I want to hang him. Show everyone in town that like you don't mess with, with the, in, with the empire. And she's like, do what you want. I still, I'm going to go with, he's the one in command, but maybe he's asking okay. the local operative, which is her, which is Miro for advice, but uh-huh. ultimately he gives the final decision. I'm going, Pip, Pip's got a, Pip is more important than anything. The Pips. Tell Yo, me let's Pips. crowdsource this. Put it in the comments. Yeah, tell us, tell us. We don't know. Tell it was. Well, there's controversy. I hope, I hope it's not Pips, but I do want it. I want it to be the Pips. Who, who, I want it to be Pips because then our system, we, we decoded their system. That's right. But I don't think it is. I think she's in charge. Well, we'll, we'll find out from the maybe I'm whoever, just whoever is right. Language. We have to pretend we knew all along. That's right. That's how it's, that's how knowledge works. Whoever's wrong, also pretend we knew all along. That's right. No, just media flip. Yeah. Oh yeah. So this part, uh, Mon Mothma is in the Senate, <laughs> and she's like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, because our we're oh, doing all these great things because the citizens of our planet sent us here, like it's some kind of democracy." Wasn't she just part of some super rich family? Was like at sixteen, get into the Senate, yeah. some kind of yeah. nepotism. Like what the? What is yeah. she talking about? Hogwash. That's what she's talking about. Hey, but she that's, that's did she turn out to be a good leader? She, she cares did. about her people. Nay, hey, nepotism works. Nepotism works. Nepotism works. That's that's the lesson. That's the lesson. Okay, lesson life lesson over there. <laughs> what is next the follow up is why is your door like this it's so dangerous so dangerous because like this, see this medallion this medallion on the right side like people are going to run into this thing this thing on mm-hmm. like but it's just my, sticking out my counter to that is the doorway shape itself has this little these little lip businesses Yep. Jut out into the floor, so a person mm-hmm. wouldn't want to wouldn't want to breach this vertical line. So they're never going to be able to engage in that. Well, just don't fall, and then bang your head. Assuming that doesn't happen, that you're not a moron. Then... Yeah. So I guess if people are droids and never fuck up walking the path, and uh, and if they can avoid that corner 100, percent yeah, we're good. Yeah. Exactly. My counter to that is if they do trip on that. They bam, they trip on there, then bam, bam, they hit their head. Mm-hmm. And then they fall over and die because they never deserve to live in the first place. Whoa. Because they're not droids. Anyone not droids, get off my yeah. Coruscant. Robot uprising. Also, awesome couch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Such skinny little uh, it, pillows, sections. Oh, yeah. You know how, like, L couches or stuff? You can get these couches that come in sections, and you can sort of put them in any shape you want. These, this couch has little tiny sections that you can rearrange in only one way. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, what is that? Like, 20 factorial ways you can arrange this couch, but it's all going to be a circle. It's all going to be a circle. It's all going to be part of a circle. That's right. Well, maybe maybe you can get the you order the full three hundred and sixty and just throw out the ones you don't need. 
Ah, you only sit at one section at a time and you wear it out and you throw it out. So this gives you the lifetime of the couch. You just rotate out, rotate them out. They're so they rich. They're not, they're not the same rotating. one every time you throw it out. They're so rich. They're not rotating out, you know, sections of a couch. What they're going to oh. do is just buy a whole new couch and it just appears because the servants brought it up. I mean, everyone's rich for things to some degree. Maybe this couch is just at the ceiling of their wealth. I doubt it. Just right on the cusp. They can barely afford this couch. Her family is so powerful. Well, both of their family is so powerful uh -huh, uh -huh. that they could send a 16-year-old to the Galactic Senate. Nobody cares. And that 16-year-old serves until she's what? She's like 40? Here, forty-five, maybe. Job. Yeah, well, you know, she's been sitting on the Senate job. for thirty years. Taking they can butt, afford, taking names. They, they, they can afford a couch. Do you know what type of couch this is? <laughs> a couch could be very expensive. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know for a fact that couch, <laughs> how expensive mm. the couch is, so mm. I cannot one hundred percent refute mm. your ridiculous logic. Mm. If I recall, Mon Mothma is having financial problems right now. She's unable to move a lot of sums of money. Maybe it's all stored up in this couch. Maybe that's why that's where the rebels' funding is going. This couch. Mm. Okay, we're moving Very on precious. to the next picture. <laughs> 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 Wait, what is this? Ah, this is when when Cassian is talking with Kino. Roy? No, no. Yeah. Kino Lay? Kino. Kino Loy. Kino Loy. Okay. They're talking, and, and Endor says that they're cheaper than droids, and they're easier mm -hmm. to replace. In fact, I think we have clip. Can we send that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, this, this is, is Kino. Very intense. Yeah. This is Kino. There you go. Ready? Yeah. They're cheaper than droids, and easier to replace. He's talking about the what prisoners. Yeah, the prisoners are cheaper than droids and easier to replace. They're cheaper than droids what? and easier to replace. My question is, what are the costs associated with operating droids? In Star Wars, it's never really clear how droids and people interact. They kind of just exist on the similar-ish level. Okay. But in many respects, you'd think droids are much cheaper than humans because they don't have to eat. They don't have to shit and piss. They don't have to all the, you know, they don't need creature biological comforts, stuff. all the biological yeah. stuff. Droids can just do the work and then go into sleep mode. But they need power. I mean, that doesn't seem prohibitively expensive, at least in comparison to food and water and all that. Yeah, especially for this special base, this base that has like mm -hmm. these these sinkholes outside mm -hmm. you can just put a turbine down there you mm -hmm. get you get infinite uh, it, what infinite hydroelectric power mm -hmm. well but according to what cassian says here droids they're not just cheap they actually do yeah. require maintenance so. i mean i guess it's like wear and tear mm -hmm. Wear and tear. Well, and if the more maybe more the more complex the droid gets in order to do work that humans could do, the the maintenance and the upkeep costs rise in accordance with that, which makes them. Yeah, I guess expensive. I'm asking what type of maintenance and upkeeps is required for these things. Um, I could you know I could imagine. Well, what if when when the the droids are so complex that they break often. And if they don't have like a self-repairing immune system oh. and healing, you have to just replace them constantly. Yeah. And if they're really, really complex, those are really, really expensive. Maybe a self-healing, self-immune system human is superior. Is Yeah, I guess that would be cheaper than the maintenance required for a droid. Maybe, yeah. I also had an issue with, he says, uh, nobody is listening. Remember that part? Yeah, you can't possibly know that. Yeah. He could speculate that he was yelling, like, tell us the intel about this uh, prison. Tell us, you know, the guard numbers. Tell us all these things. And uh, what's his name again? Lido. That's Kino right. Loy. Tino. Kino Loy. T Kino. K-I-N-O. Kino. 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 That's right. Mm. Kino is getting all nervous and stuff because his, you know, prison sentence is coming up to an end. 
And then it, and then Cassian's like, nobody's listening. Now he could speculate on that, but there's no way he knows that for a fact. No way. I mean, has like Cassian, have you checked every vent? Have you checked behind every panel? Like, no way. Especially like you're gone for half the day. Like anything could have happened in there. Oh, I mean, I guess he's not necessarily saying that the microphones don't exist. I think he's saying the microphones probably do exist. It's that they don't bother to listen to the microphones. Yeah, because why would they? Who cares? Yeah, yeah, they're prisoners. Who cares? Which I think is actually a decent guess, but to you know, that's don't know that for sure. Right. Yeah. Especially if they put droids on it, it doesn't matter anymore. That's in complete contradiction to what we just said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's cheaper. It's cheaper to have one droid that listens to everyone. There that's it is. True. Yeah. Oh, this was a sly move. This was, yeah. So, uh, Hurt, that's this guy's name, her, uh, Miro's assistant, mm -hmm. or attendant, I think is the official term. Attendant, yeah. So, he sits behind her in this uh, conference room, and when Miro was kind of fumbling with her words a little bit, he jumps out of his seat and then prominently walks forward to Miro's side and starts explaining their position. It seemed like he was... Uh, Kind of get a bit too bit for his, big for his britches with this one. Oh, was that a line? Maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe. It's kind of, right on the edge. Right on the edge. On one hand, like, he on was defending hand... Miro, but uh -huh. on the other hand, he was making himself more prominent, maybe angling for a promotion. I don't know. He did this thing where he asked this rhetorical question to the room, but actually it wasn't rhetorical. He wanted Miro to state the answer. Felt kind of like uh, putting her on the spot there. Yeah. But he put her on the spot in such a way that showed that she had already done the work. Yeah, it was weird. Weird. Interesting, right? Well played. Well played. You know, somebody... Would it have been better for him to have spoken quietly to her? Or is this actually the better move? For him or for her or for both? For For her. Yeah, I don't know. If he was, he was, if he was like inspector, no, supervisor, supervisor Miro, like tell him about this thing. Like, would that look bad in the room? I think that would look terrible. Better do this. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe hmm. this is the best he could do. Yeah, maybe. Oh yeah, here's look just at that. this beautiful room. Yeah. First of all, just the the geometric symmetry of it absolutely beautiful mm -hmm. secondly all this this honeycombing up here i guess not honeycomb honeycomb is six-sided all this shape stuff up here it's it's sound dampening like, yeah you're the talking imperial, about the, the, the yeah, stuff yeah. that's placed on this these on the inside of the dome structure looks yes. like sound dampening foam and also these these panels up here mm -hmm. these are also sound dampening they minimize the reflections coming off of the walls and this this foamy stuff is all see these like they're like uh, at weird angles they also dampen the sound by redirecting so mm -hmm. so the empire man they really care about their audio engineers like you know that bureau they're doing real good like give them all the funding they want yeah and i'm sure it creates a culture of great work in defense of the empire and the emperor to have mm -hmm. s s very sleek and slick Offices, buildings, quiet, and conference quiet rooms. Quiet yeah. rooms. Everyone can think very clearly. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, yeah. Oh. While you're stepping on people. Oh, yeah. So last episode, we talked about how if you were surrounded by the concrete jungle of Coruscant, maybe on these skywalks, it would be nice to have some kind of holographic projection of the serenity of nature. And yeah, even if you knew... Sunset. Even if you knew that the, it was fake, your ma your mind would somehow be affected a little bit and make you happier. Feel good. So here in this prison, they could totally implement that with these sky bridges. They choose not to, of course. Missed opportunity. What? Missed opportunity. Yeah. Well, how is it not a missed opportunity? Well, they could have just done a hologram of torture scenes to make the situation even worse. Mm. It's the Empire. <laughs> hmm. 
This guy's mother. What's his name again? C Cyril. Cyril, Cyril. Carl is the guy. Yeah. Cyril. Yeah. His mother. Man, she just wrecks him. So this is this is one part of one of the interactions between his mother and him. Man, she puts him down. Then she like swings around when he when he says he got a promotion. She's all happy. Oof. Emotional roller Emotional coaster. Emotional roller coaster. Right? Yeah. Oof. He could be very dangerous in the future. Oh yeah, so they're working on this thing, which we don't know what it does, and uh, this thing they they have this drill sort of spinny thing that they bring down into the center of this six-legged device, which we don't know what it does, and it's throwing off sparks right down here. It's mm -hmm. throwing off sparks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's the what do you think that is? Any ideas? A uh, spark twister. A spark twister. So they're not just they're not just assembling something. They're actually machining it in some way with the spark twister. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's it then. Yep. Yep. Okay. Wouldn't it be wild if the night shift's job were to take the assembled claw grabbers and just disassemble them? Disassemble. Disassemble them. Wait. Say that one more time. So the day shift, their mm -hmm. job is to assemble these. Mm -hmm. The night shift, their job is to disassemble them. Oh. They're not even contributing to the empire. They're just reassembling. The empire doesn't even want their labor. It's just fucking with them. Just so much logistics and so much effort and so many buildings built and facilities with people trained and manned and in prisons. I mean, building a building underwater. <laughs> just... To fuck with people. No way. Yeah, no, I can't believe that. The Empire. Can't believe that. Oof. The Empire. That is dastardly. The Empire. Oof. So it is true. Vel and Mon Mothma are cousins. Sure. Sure. That's it. Cool connection. Sure. So Mon Mothma is one of the prominent rebel leaders in the Senate. And Vel is... Boots on the ground, rebel leader. Hmm. Same family. Just starting Nep out. Nepotism works, just saying. Nepotism works. That's right. <laughs> Vel lowly started out just starting out lieutenant. She was connected all the way up to the money man, all the way up to the axis. Hmm. Yep. Who's also a friend of Mon Mothmas. Hmm. Hmm. Yep. Cool steps, though. Yeah. It's a beautiful entrance the apartment mm. you know and i'm also happy uh, we always talk about door shape in science fiction how it is uh very inconvenient a lot of the time however this is a rich person's apartment it makes so sense. this door shape is just to show off i guess i'll make it a little more prominent there it's just to show off that they can have a strange door shape you know it's not really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there for convenience it's really you know we saw that we said We've seen in other sci-fi shows where they'll make like a strangely shaped door in a place that is for logistics. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. maybe that's not a great idea. But here, it makes sense, I think. Rich people do things like that. Yeah, they do. I mean, I would too. Oh, yeah. This was a, this was a really strange scene where yeah. was Cyril coming on to Miro like romantically? He was just right on the edge. He was right on the edge because he like described. He described he chose. He was talking about his like passion in his life, but he used words that were just a little bit too romantic. And is he transferring his need for his mother's love onto Miro? Is that what's happening here? Oh, maybe. That's and then M Miro is going to have to reject his love, his transferred love, whatever it is. And he's going to feel even more rejection and go into a deeper spiral that could end in I don't know what. The dark side. The dark side. But he's not force sensitive. He'll be the darkest of the dark bureaucrats. What? The dark lords of the bureaucrats. That's right. yeah. <laughs> He'll do that paperwork with some evilness that nobody else has seen. Would you like that tax credit? No. Fuck your shit up. 
Oh yeah. So, so looking this outside this window, are we looking at the other side of like of a tower? So does each ISB agent get their own pillar in the building? That would be pretty epic. Like all so, the people, like and all the people that work below Miro, like work below Miro. Maybe. I kind of see. Do you see this? Um, this right here. This section right there. Yeah. That kind. Of, there's there's two of them. There's this section. Right. That's coming across. Yeah. And then over here, there's another an exact same one at a different perspective yeah if we go over to her office is that right there the same structure right there oh there's Outside horizontal the bars horizontal yeah. like i don't know slats yeah and then similarly and over here right there uh-huh so that means she's on the inside right here so right there so we're on the in in her office. We're on the inside, looking out, and we see those two structures. And this is from the outside looking in, and we see the two structures. So her uh, office is scale. on the center pillar. Can we go back to the right picture? Yeah. What is this bar down there? Is this the gap? between the two rows let's see here i see two if i look at that picture and i zoom in you see two here i see one yeah and if i go down a little bit more i see a second one right there but it's kind of obscured by the skywalk but right here i guess i don't know is, this is doesn't one. this is a weird scale it doesn't and feel over right here over there is one as well right there so in her office, we should see one, and there's even a third one, but this one's one, this is missing. So if we go over here, we got one above the other. So I think we're on the inside looking out from the ISB. So there must be a central pillar with the things on the outside. Ah, and, uh, and those are outward. far away. Those aren't yeah. right outside the window. Right. Okay, maybe. Yeah. Which means I guess the command people are in the center. And so it would look like are for it would look like a it would look like a flower and there's like a spike in the middle. Yeah. It would be like a okay. blooming onion. Yeah, a blooming onion of of intelligence and security. Oh look, it's the ISB headquarters. Right there. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so they're the, her, they're the big her, cheese. <laughs> it's a, it's they're, a, the, they're the blue cheese in there. I can't make it bigger. Put put some blue pips and some pens on that. Oh, cool. There we go. Okay, so I'm zooming in on this. Oh, you can see their office. Oh my gosh. That's, uh, yeah. this is, okay, so this is it. <laughs> so this, that's, uh, let's say this section right here has to be Miro's office. And then the onion pieces are the outside petals. Yeah, is this worth it? Right. Thank you, Wisconsin State Fair. So if we go to this picture, then these, this is a blooming onion piece. That is a blooming onion piece. This is a blooming onion piece. And this is a blooming onion piece. And inside there somewhere is the dip where Miro's office is. I guess so. There we go. Okay, analysis con concluded i guess <laughs> so so thorough <laughs> so this is a conversation between mon mothma and the banker who was her childhood friend we still haven't learned his name and so she's trying to move like large amounts of money from her bank accounts to rebel bank accounts mm -hmm. and she can't do it because the new regulations are auditing everybody but he's a banker, so he can find ways around it somehow. The but banker. he wants to use a go-between or a third party or something. And the person they say is Davos Galden. And he's a thug. 
We don't know who he is yet. But the only way she can move money is with this, this guy. So is she going to do it? Does her banker friend have super shady friends? Is that what we're also learning? Yeah. I think the the thug is the richest guy in the planet. And so uh, they do some shady stuff, I guess. But, I mean, if if they need the money, they need the money. And if he's the only one that can pull it off, then I guess they have to get their hands dirty. Yeah, we'll see. This may, this may end up being a big trouble spot for Mon Mothma. Mm. We'll see if there's any blowback with other people. I mean, say what you want about Major Redagats. He runs efficient meetings. They're super fast. None of this wasting time. Say what you need to say. Get people back to work. I'd work for him. Absolutely. It's not just meeting itis, a nine to five meeting all day long. It's, right? It's efficient. Do you see how empty that room is? Work from home. That's right. I guess that's what five pips gets you. Five pips. Oh yeah. So last time we were uh, talking about last episode, we did analysis about how does the how do they electrocute people standing on a floor? If they just raise the voltage of the floor, there's no current that could flow through the people because it's all you're raising the voltage of the two feet in the same amount. However, here they show the workers get targeted by the floor on command mm -hmm. of the uh, guards or whoever's making the rules. This mm -hmm. group right here is the slow group. Their specific section of floor hurts them and nobody else. So they can actually target people standing on the floor whenever they want. So the floor is yeah. really advanced. It must... I buy it. Two, the two feet standing are given two different voltages, which then causes electricity to flow and knock you over. I buy it. They were called into the middle of the room, so I guess maybe there's more control over that part of the room. I th Maybe. I figured it was like they could just positively charge and negatively charge each tile a little separated in there. So then oh. you can get, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was you thinking imagine, like, uh, yeah, like take yeah, this so guy's if they're feet. separated by tiles. Can we look into the middle of the room where those guys are? Well, hold on a second. So this guy's feet right here. And then this guy's feet over here. You could make this yeah. positive and this negative. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. Great. And then you would draw you draw electrons up this way. Exactly, yeah. So I was thinking yeah. it's not per tile, it's per like you could like dial it into the foot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You could. So yes, you could just do two pressure sensitive points mm -hmm. and you make one positive, one negative, and you just assume by the closest ones are two different feet for one person. Sure. And I guess even if you did if you did two different people, that way it'd still be okay. You could cause them to electrocute each other if they touched. Sure. I guess if you didn't always get the pairing right, sometimes somebody would be spared. And but I guess also if they fell down, then that would change the pairing. That's true. That's true. This floor, in summary, this floor is super advanced because it's able to do this kind of stuff. Yeah. It's essentially the electrocution twister. That's right. That's, that's right. <laughs> oh so sad Ooh, my heart this is a this is a wicked prison yeah I take back what I said about the job being awesome <laughs> not worth it yeah not worth it he just dies of a stroke as an old man in prison can't see the his family or whoever outside because the empire said that's what's going to happen. God. And didn't we learn right after this happened, they bring in the doctor and the doctor tells Cassian and Kino that actually the people in level two learned that the sentences are indefinite and they rioted yeah. and a bunch of people died. They brought someone from level four. He was supposed to get out. He ended up in level two and they told everyone and mm -hmm. the guards killed everyone on the floor yeah so, so now, now that the other prisoners know it none of them can go because otherwise that information would get out into the universe can't do it yeah 
So now they learned this because this guy had a stroke and died. And now Cassian and Kino are going to lead an escape for sure. It's yeah. got to happen. 12 so this guards guy's, on the floor. This guy didn't die for nothing. He was able to be a part of communicating that to help the prisoners escape. He's I'm the spark sad. that causes the rebellion. Yeah, I'm just still sad. He'll come back. Oh, yeah, and that's it. That is season one, episode nine. So there's more being built up. Still not sure what it's going to culminate to yet, but getting there. <laughs>